Good evening, everyone. My name is David Morgan. I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're glad you could be here this evening. On behalf of Gordon McGee and the family of Delilah, we're just grateful that you could be here to celebrate the life of someone who has touched so many lives. Amen? We're thankful as 
the children of God, that God has promised us life. Amen? Amen. And we know that he's coming soon. And we want to be ready when he's coming. But I want to welcome each one of you, whether you're a friend or family. Um, We're just grateful that the Hayden Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church could host and be here to provide, uh, to comfort those that mourn. And so I would like to invite you as far as possible. Um, I'm going to kneel, but I'd like to invite you to bow your head and let's pray and invite the presence of our Lord and Savior with us uh, at this time. Our gracious Father in heaven, one who abounds in grace and love, from the throne of grace, we come before you, Lord. We're thankful that you have given your Son to die for each one of us, not because we are worthy or lovely, but because Jesus is lovely. So, Father, I pray that with broken hearts that are torn, I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be sent to be with us today that each one who hurts will be filled with your presence, knowing, Lord, that you have promised to comfort us and to give us a hope because we look forward to the day when Jesus comes to take us all home. We recognize and acknowledge that this is not our home, but this is all temporary. And so, Father, we look forward to the promise you have given us in your holy word, the Bible, that Jesus shall come in the clouds of glory and those that sleep in Jesus and those that are ready to meet him, we will be reunited in a grand family reunion. And we look forward to that day. But until then, Lord, we ask that you keep us faithful and that you would bless us with your holy presence. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen.
A sleeping Jesus bless sleep from which none ever wake to weep. A calm and undisturbed repose, unbroken by the last of foes. A sleep in Jesus soon to rise when the last trump rend the skies. Then burst the feathers of the tomb and waken full and more to hope bloom. Let's pray together. Gracious, kind, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you for this life that we've all been privileged to be touched by. Father, it is my hope and desire that we would see the life that Delilah's life was touched by and that we would partake in that joy and that peace that she had in Jesus. For we ask these things and be with my words and in this place, for we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, family, coworkers, uh, thank you for coming. We appreciate you coming out. Uh, this just shows me more and more that uh, I really had no idea who I was married to. She surprised me uh, right down to the last few moments and minutes. Um, I'm known for speaking up front, and you know, all the women can attest to a lot of times you're just your husband's wife. Uh, but I married a spiritual powerhouse, a giant of faith. And you know, and I'm a little sorry it took for this for me to really realize what I had. Um, Delilah is uh, survived um, by some beautiful family members. Uh, her father and mother, Edwin and Arlene Torres. Uh, a sister, an older sister, Shireen Robles. Uh, and a brother, a younger brother, Marcus Torres and their family members. Uh, Marcus is married to Leslie, and they have Landon and Brooke, are their children, a brother and sister combo. And my nephews are here. The Robles family is here. Uh, Brittany, Micah, Elijah, Kayla, and Philip. She's touched each one of our lives. And from that family collectively to, uh, to you, we want to say thank you. Um, especially to the Hayden Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church that put all this on um, in our time of need. Uh, we are a long way from our old home, uh, but soon to go to our new home. Amen. Amen. So just again, our family thanks you for this um, in many, many ways, in many, many ways. Um, to start Delilah's story, I have to begin with her parents. I wish you knew them. Oh, I wish you knew them. The sweetest people I've ever met, ever known. Uh, Arlene would not let you leave her house hungry. And if anyone here has been subject to uh, Delilah's giving and her graces, uh, that stems directly from her parents. Um, my father, Edwin, will give you the shirt off his back if he had to, the shoes on his feet. And this somehow translated down into his daughter. 
Um, and my mother Arlene was is very much the same the same way. Um, she was raised in a Catholic home, and at the age of eight, they converted from Catholicism to Adventism. Mm -hmm. And this began to uh, make quite a change in their household, from what I understand. Uh, they were in the world. Uh, they were worldly people. Uh, I know some of you are third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation Adventists. Uh, not these fine folks. Um, but good people still nonetheless. Um, a little bit of Delilah's childhood. I had heard a story that was posted on Facebook that I wanted to repeat here because I think it speaks to the character of the person she was. In grade school, she had a friend invited over, maybe for the first time, I believe, and she saw that Delilah had her name inscribed in a piece of wood. And the next time she saw Delilah, Delilah had her friend's name inscribed in that same piece of wood or in a piece of wood. You know, who, who thinks like that? Who's that caring about or that aware of others' needs? As a teenager, though, um, my dear wife uh, rebelled. Oh, you laugh. Some of you understand. Okay. Wanted to get away from the church. Wanted to get away from God. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And that led her into her college years. Uh, she wanted to get away from God so bad, she met me. <laughs> that tells you uh, where I was in my life at that time. Okay? So, out of a miracle, friends... A miracle. Amen. God took something that the devil wanted to use for evil. Is he good? Thank you, brother. I've got a pocket full, too. Oh. So there we were in college. There we were in sin. Sin is a transgression of the law for those who don't know God's Ten Commandments. There Delilah and I find ourselves. But that's not where God left us. Mm -hmm. That's not where he left us. He began to get a hold of our wicked hearts. And the process of conversion started to happen. You know, there's nothing more interesting than for you to be trying to run from God and you to get a hold of a person who you don't think is godly and you begin to have godly discussions. I would imagine you start to feel like Jonah. Where am I trying to go? Where am I running to? It's hard to outrun the love of God, isn't it? Amen. There's somebody here today trying to outrun the love of God. You can't. Just come on home. We, uh, <clears throat> through a course series of events that is too long to mention now, we end up uh, coming to the Lord together. Uh, we're studying the Bible having interactions, and before we knew it, uh, we were baptized the day before we were married in the cold month of December in an unheated baptismal pool <laughs> in New York City, the Bronx to be exact. Uh, that then was the first evidence that my wife was going to be serious about her faith because she hated to be cold. And she got into that water, beloved. New York to Idaho. Oh, yes. Country living. Listen, friends, I'm going to be playing with you because that's how my wife would want me to say it to you. We left New York for a lot of reasons. One of them was to save our marriage. 
Mm -hmm. Somebody in here is going through the same thing. It was to have a closer walk with the Lord. It's nice to be making a lot of money in those things, but how is it with your soul? Mm -hmm. How is it with your soul? So out of that urgency that I couldn't answer the Lord's question, well, if you die, will your family be saved? I know you're paying off your debt, but will you be okay with me? And I couldn't give him a firm yes. So I thought we had to change our environments. Now, here's what's significant about that. My wife grew up in the Bronx, Soundview to be exact, never left that place a day in her life. And because she was a woman of God, mm -hmm, she followed God's leading, leading me all the way to Idaho. Come on. Come on, ladies. It's okay to submit sometimes in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Huh. Now, some of those here in this room, you have been a personal witness to Delilah's love and labor for souls. Mm -hmm. This marks the next kind of phase of our relationship, phase of our co-laboring, that she loves people. She, she didn't want you just to be well. She didn't want to just give you things if you haven't figured it out yet. She wanted you to be in eternity with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The attention, the phone calls, the time was for a greater eternal purpose. And if you've been gifted and blessed by that, I hope you're putting that together in your experience and in your memories with Delilah. Hmm. And then about a little over a year ago, she received uh, the diagnosis that she had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And we immediately got on our faces, began praying asking God to remove any evil thing in our lives and our hearts. And then we got researching. And my dear wife chose a protocol and a plan that she felt God would honor and bless and would satisfy the king of heaven. And I did my best to support her in that. And I think all of you here who supported her that supported her in that effort and in that journey that she began and was on. Mm hmm. This woman, man, the fight that was in her, the commitment that was in her. And what she told me was this. I want to do something. I only want to be healed if it, all the glory can go to God. Only if all the glory can go to God. Yeah. That's all right, honey. Hmm. And these were her thoughts about the cancer. She said, you know, if you were to ask her, those of you may have heard her say this. She said, the cancer has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Hmm. And some of you may say, well, why? How? Why would she say that? Because mm -hmm. it cemented her relationship with our Savior. Now, I hope and pray that it doesn't take disease and cancer and tragedy for all of us to cement our relationship with Jesus. Come on. But it did. It did something new for her. It took her deeper than she had been before. And she approached her treatment with faith, with fortitude, with veracity with commitment that I didn't even know she had, friends. Hmm. Hmm. And then as uh, we began to notice that things were going a little bit south, which wasn't too long ago, and it happened quickly and rapidly, 
there was no change in waver in her faith. There was no cowardice or fear. Why, you ask? Because she knows Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because she knows she was loved by Jesus. So she goes on. She goes pressing on. And I'm playing catch up. <laughs> no fear, friends. Spiritual giant, friends. Amazing to me. I'd like to read you something uh, that was sent to me. Because I know there are some here who are more than likely struggling with the idea of how could God save such a beautiful person? Huh. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, you have been in our thoughts and in our prayers. I just read this in my devotions this morning, and it made me think of Delilah. I thought I'd share it with you. Quote, the righteous perish, and no one ponders it in his heart. Devout men are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away huh, to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lay in death. She's sleeping, friends. Hid away from the tempter. Hid away from pain. Hid away from suffering. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We trust him. She trusted him. Hmm. As you and we, Miss Delilah, perhaps God in his goodness and love is sparing her from some future evil, allowing her to find peace as she rests in him. Mm. What a nice text to receive. Amen. I'd like to read one more to you if I could. My dear brother and friend, with the heart of sadness and grief of mind at the passing of your beloved and friend Delilah, my wife, and I want to let you know that our prayers, sympathies, condolences, and love are with you and your loved ones at this time. We are devastated with this tragic news hit us, wouldn't it hit us. It was dumbfounding to us. Hmm? But our Heavenly Father has seen fit to seal your beloved companion in a righteous grave to save her. May the promises of the hope of the special resurrection and the second coming of the life giver, whose glorious appearing will destroy the last enemy, which is death, heal you, comfort you, hmm? and keep you faithful until that glorious day. When you shall see your beautiful helpmeet, once more for eternity. Mm -hmm. Our love, prayers, and blessings. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life. Friends, I want to tell you, if you don't have this hope that Delilah had, that there's an eternity to be had how sad and terrible is this life how empty is this life I think I've never seen my wife not smiling well I've seen her not smile sometimes <laughs> all the husbands understand what I'm saying But she was smiling, not just because of the, the, the character that she already had and the person she was, but also because she had this great hope. Now, here is what I want to say to you in closing. <coughs> hmm. If you notice in Delilah's story, she started out 
in the truth, in the church. And then she found herself in the world, in sin, in error, in darkness. And God granted her the grace and the time to get our lives turned around that she may be saved. And then to guarantee it, he allowed the enemy, you heard me right, he allowed the enemy in lifestyle and ignorance to afflict her with cancer. But then he took that cancer and used it to seal her in the truth so that she's going to come up in the resurrection. Now I say this to you, especially to all my young people in here that are running from Jesus, that are living the same life that Delilah lived. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking to you. Do you hear me? You may not have the same time that she had. I'm serious, friends. You may not have the same time that was granted her. So I know it is Delilah's desire and her hope that every person in this room that she's ever touched, been in contact with, involved with, is that you would choose Jesus today. Let me pray with you. Gracious, kind, loving, heavenly Father. We thank you for the time again that we were able to spend with Delilah. And it is my prayer on her behalf that everyone under the sound of my voice would make a decision for Jesus that they might be with her again in eternity. That we might be together at the river of life, under the tree of life, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, please be finished the work you have begun in every soul in this room is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for coming. Blessings on you.
reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. We have reached a, a very important time in the program this afternoon as we have the opportunity to walk down Memories Lane and recall the gentle, quiet, gracious, yet dynamic Christian woman whom we, have, whom we have come to know and to love, and who has ministered to us in her own unique and wonderful way. And so we want to give you an opportunity because we know many of you have very precious memories you would like to share. Now we have three young men who will be manning the handheld microphones. And so if you would like to speak, just raise your hand. I will do my best to direct them toward you and give you opportunity to speak. So who would like to begin? There's a hand right over here, there we go. Hi, um, my name is Ashley. And I, sorry, um, I knew Delilah now for uh, just about a year. Um, and when Gordon and Delilah came into our lives, we were pretty broken. Um, and they were angels to us. She showed us love that we never ever even knew existed. Um, I can say um, this for a lot of people, but Delilah was truly a giant blessing in our lives. She motivated us and pushed us to do better, and she just wanted to see everybody succeed in, in their walk with Christ, and um, we're very, very fortunate to have her in our lives, and I, I hope we will see her soon. Thank you. And another. Hand in the back, standing in the back. Hi, my name is Caleb. And just, I was thinking about some memories, spending time with Gordon and Delilah remember there was a time that I spent a weekend with them and uh, it was just so such a blessing to um, get to know them I didn't know them as well as probably a lot of you but um, or I didn't know Delilah as well as probably a lot of you but um, I remember one memory um, the time I spent the weekend with them um, it was a time in my life that I would wear shoes out to the point they had holes in them. And maybe Gordon remembers this, but I was spending the weekend with them and we had gone out somewhere and I'd gotten water in my shoes. And uh, I don't know if I just, if I picked it up or if it didn't happen, but if I remember correctly, kind of Gordon looked at Delilah and Delilah looked at Gordon and they went to Walmart and bought me shoes right off the bat. And uh, I was like, Guys, you don't have to do this. I'm, I, it's okay. Yeah, I have holes in my shoes, but it's not a big deal. But um, it was really a blessing. And then just uh, Gordon and Delilah, really a big, big blessing. And uh, yeah. 
Thank you. And another. Here's a hand right here. There we go. Is it on? There we go. I'll try not to make this too long. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Abby Belgard. I met Delilah about eight years ago um, at Valley Vista, where we worked, and um, we shared an office together, so we spent a lot of time together. And at the time that I met Delilah, um, I was completely in the world as well. I wasn't raised Christian or anything, and I had just had my first baby. And after I had my baby, my thoughts completely changed. Um, I wanted to give my daughter a good life, but I knew that the life that I was living at the time would just end up really hurting my daughter. Um, Gail and I were very unstable. We were on again, off again, with lots of drinking and, and partying. And, um, and I just knew that if, if we didn't change our lifestyle, um, that we would have never stayed together. Um, and my daughter would have been in a split home with two alcoholic parents. Um, and I had that fear hanging over my head every day. I wanted to change, but I didn't know how. And that's where Delilah came in. I saw something in her that was so beautiful. She had a peace and a joy that I wanted. She lived mm -hmm. a life of purity. She was so different than than anyone I had ever met. Um, so I was really drawn to her. And Delilah really had the art of friendship ministry down to a science. Um, she knew that the way to lead me to Jesus was to become my friend first. But after knowing her all these years, I know that her love for me was truly genuine. Um, she would ask me to go on girl dates, to go get pedicures or go out to lunch um, or to go shopping, which is both of our favorite. Um, she even invited me to go with her to New York. And so I said yes. And we, she took this country girl to the big city. And I remember we were on a subway, I think in Brooklyn, um, or maybe it was the Bronx, anyway. So I'm sitting there on the subway and this woman walks in and she's dressed um, like a chef and she's in a chef outfit with a big chef hat and she's carrying this chocolate um, castle that she had made. And immediately I start talking with her and we're just having a great time and she breaks off a piece of her chocolate castle, and she said, do you want some of this? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> and Delilah had to pull me to the side and say, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. You can't take candy from strangers. <laughs> um, she had to teach me stranger danger. <laughs> um, but our friendship really blossomed. And as I said, I wanted to live a healthier, stabler life. I had heard from some coworkers at work to watch out um, for that girl because she was real religious. And um, so that struck my curiosity. And I started asking her questions about God and why she lived the way she did. And everything she told me made so much sense. And as I began to study myself, I quickly fell in love with the God that she introduced me to. I realized that the reason I had seen a difference in her was because the Lord was in her heart. I was used to walking around in darkness, and I had met her, had I met her a couple years prior, 
She would have been too bright for me. I wouldn't have been attracted to her brightness. I would have shunned away from it. But God is so good. He knew the perfect time that I would be ready to welcome the light. And he used his faithful servant, Delilah, to do so. So after studying for a while on my own, I started going to church with her, and I became baptized. And I loved this new way of life, the stability and, and just walking with the Lord. Um, but I had a burden on my heart. Um, my husband was still living in the world, and our lifestyles became completely different. Delilah taught me that if I wanted him to come to the Lord, then I had to show him uh, Jesus in the way that I treated him. She taught me how to love my husband. Mm -hmm. So over the course of a couple of years, Gail began to warm up more and more to spiritual things. And eventually we started doing Bible studies with Gordon and Delilah, and we did that for two years. Um, they came to our house every week. And they were just the best friends that Gail and I could ever ask for. They bent over backwards for us and put their heart and soul into helping us. Delilah loved children. She loved my children, and she always made my girls feel so loved. And, um, and she always pushed me to do my best. And I can't wait to see her again. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was Thank so you. long. Thank <laughs> you. All right, there's another hand right there. Okay, I'll be with you in just a moment. Um, my testimony with Delilah is very similar. Um, Abby, who just shared, uh, is my sister. And um, I met Delilah through Abby in 2015, and I was um, freshly divorced, single mom, um, living a very sordid life, trying to drown the pain of a really messy divorce um, with parties and alcohol and everything that you do when you're in the world and you don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, so Abby introduced us. And I just remember feeling, I'd met Christians before in my life, but Gordon and Delilah especially were different. I never felt judged for a second. I didn't feel like a black sheep amongst a white, a bunch of woolly white lambs. Um, they treated me like one of their own, and much like Abby, she brought me under her wing and took me places and showed me how to live a Christian life very, very practically. Um, not by telling me, but by showing me and by being an example. And, um, whew. Um, and she did that for years. She sacrificed her time and her energy and put everything into me. And uh, I know that I am a star on Delilah McGee's crown, and I know I'm not the only one in this room. And not only me, but my children. Um, so, uh, <sighs> um, She's just been an amazing example to me in so many things, as a wife, as a parent, as um, just a Christian woman. Um, I think she prepared me for my husband, um, who I met several years after I became baptized. Um, and one memory I remember having, um, I had met, who's now my husband, but I didn't know that at the time, and I called Delilah and I said, there's this guy, I gotta get to know him. Um, but I need an excuse to have him come over to my house, and I'm certainly not going to invite him over by himself. So if I tell him I'm having friends over, will you come over so it's not a lie? <laughs> and, um, and she kind of I rolled her eyes, I could tell, in her voice and said, fine, but you have to name your firstborn child after me. <laughs> <laughs> And unfortunately, I had a boy. Um, otherwise, we'd have a little Delilah here. But, um, but um, she just she means the world to me. And uh, 
And I just want to say that cancer did not win, as you all know that. Um, <laughs> her life is a victory for God's kingdom. And, um, and I know that, that, um, that heaven's rejoicing over this precious soul that Satan cannot claim as his own. So, thank you. Thank you. That is so true. You know, John said, Blessed are the, those that die in the Lord from henceforth. They may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Yes. All right. Can you hear me now? All there right, we go. You. Hi, my name is Joel. I'm with my wife, Mariah. It's actually funny how I first met Gordon and Delilah. Well, first Gordon. And... Um, in Sandpoint, Idaho, there's not many brothers there, so <laughs> um, I remember playing basketball at an open gym, and I see this guy come in, picking up his saggy pants, running in to play some ball, and I just remember just, I'm like, I'm going to witness to that guy. <laughs> so I was getting ready to talk to him, we're in the stands, and of course, he beats me to it, he starts witnessing to me, <laughs> and uh, started talking about the Gospel of John, and it was from that moment, just fell in love with Gordon, and I was single at the time, and um, if anybody knows him, anybody knows me, we like to talk. Um, and that's how I knew that he was married to a very patient woman. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't even tell you how many hours talking about the little horn and the Sabbath <laughs> with Gordon in the house. Um, but through that, through that meeting um, and me getting married, Gordon and Delilah being there for us, um, with us throughout our marriage and friendship. And um, I remember many times that People would say, oh, they're Adventists, you're not, how can you get along with them so much? And just, there's just, what they didn't understand is these people, Gordon, and Delilah, there's very few people that challenged me the way they did mm -hmm. in, in our faith. And those are the type of friends that we wanted, and we always had them around. And um, Delilah even got to be there for one of my daughter's births at home. And there were those types of people that you could trust, that you always wanted around. Um, and to end the story... Um, My wife and I went through a very difficult time because of my decisions. It was the time where we really needed people, where I really, she really needed people. And they knew that, and they, we knew that there were people we could trust. and. As my wife reminded me, they were the people that didn't judge us. My wife reminded me how they just said, what do you need? What do you need right now? And that was the most comforting thing we could, we could have in that time in our marriage where we may not have made it without people like them. And... During our marriage counseling, they would be the ones to watch our kids many, many times. There's very few people I would trust to watch our kids. But they're there for us, loving on their little babies. And I am, we are indebted to Gordon and Delilah and their love for people and that sacrifice. And I speak for my wife and I. That she will be greatly missed, but... We strive mm -hmm. to have faith like Gordon and Delilah. Mm -hmm. and we're thankful for them and for being part of our lives. Thank you, Gordon. Mm -hmm. Is the hand back here? Over here? There we go. From New York City to Idaho. Think about that. I mean, yeah. For a person who knew nothing else in her family, left New York, as some people say, she got out of the hood. <laughs> and to face bears, which she's never seen other than, I would rather be afraid of being in the city than out of the city. But right away, they moved up here, and we met him at uh, Sandpoint Church. And uh, our kids are in Georgia. So we 
kind of immediately adopted them. They came over for Bible studies. We prayed together. We uh, <laughs> had a great time. They moved from the hood to the loop, Coca-Cola loop. <laughs> I packed up an old Honda. Everything they had to come out here is absolutely amazing. And Delilah was the strength of Gordon because she just followed and let the Lord lead him. She had a really difficult job working with the Life Care Center. And you'd see the stress on her uh, being in a position of authority and so forth because of her smiling disposition. When they came over, she felt relaxed to come to our house. And as Gordon said, she hated to be cold. <laughs> so as soon as she got in the house, she went over to the sofa and grabbed pillows and put them around herself. And I threw a shot to her and I said, here, just go to sleep. Because I could see the stress and she felt that she could be comfortable at our place. So we're looking forward to seeing her again. It's one thing we do mm -hmm. have, a faith that one day she'll wake up and she'll meet Gordon in the sky. And she'll go see Jesus personally. So I'm looking for that day. Thank you. You know, I think as these, uh, these testimonies have been going on, I've been thinking of all the places that they could have moved to, they came to northern Idaho. And we've been richly blessed. Okay, another hand right there. I just wanted to share something quickly that Bill Bill had said that reminded me of Delilah and um, I'm sure she is curled up on many a couch of of brothers and sisters in this room and fallen asleep and uh, as as Joel mentioned Gordon's the chatty Kathy and uh, just staying up talking with Gordon as Delilah sleeps on the couch and and uh, I'm, I'm it's just a fond memory I have of her and I know many have the exact same memory of her just snuggled up on their couch and uh, that we can just know that she's snuggled up safely in Jesus right now waiting waiting for the Lord to wake her up mm. Oh, there are some hands over here. There's one right here and one over there to the, to the far wall. Yes. I'll go. Um, my name's Alicia. I'm speaking on behalf of my sister, too. Um, we, too, met Delilah. Um, I met Delilah through my sister, but we also did Bible studies with Gordon and Delilah. And... Um, I just, um, I can't find the words to express how much Delilah meant to our family. She was like an angel to us. She uh, was the most incredible woman that I've ever met. She was courageous, caring, strong, stubborn, <laughs> dependable, and an inspiring woman, woman of God. You could always find Delilah smiling. When she walked in any room, she lit it up. So many times, me and my sister went to Delilah about our troubles we were facing, and never once did she say, what are you going to do? She would always say, what are we going to do? And you could always expect a text later saying that she was praying for you. She was so devoted and the perfect example of a godly woman. Even in her last days, she was worried about everyone else and if they were stressing about her. Truly a selfless angel. Delilah's made a huge impact on all of our lives and will be missed so deeply. The way Delilah lived her life has inspired me to be a better woman, a better friend, to put God first, and has put a fire in me to make it to heaven to see her again. Hmm. Over here, next to the wall. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll manage. My name's Cipriana, and 
I have a lot of very fond memories of Delilah. Delilah and Gordon, after we moved from Atlanta, I guess them moving from New York City was just something familiar. We, I don't know, it was comfortable. And there were such kind, loving friends that we made. And I have so many fond memories of her, never once I think that's why I've had a hard time this week. Not being able to, you know, temporarily talk to her until we see her again. Mm -hmm. Such a sweet soul and encouraging. And as Abby said, she loved children. Every time she saw my kids, she would love on them. And I'm a very affectionate person, especially with my family. And she was more loving to them than I was, especially my youngest. He had those chubby cheeks. So she would always come and, and grab him and put him on her lap, and she would just kiss him and kiss him. <laughs> and uh, she just loved them. So she will be missed. It is uh, temporary. And I think Gordon strengthened God strengthened my faith through even Gordon tonight. Mm -hmm. We have time for maybe one or two more, and there will be time afterwards during the refreshment time downstairs for more testimonies. Are there one or two more that would like to speak? All right. There is. There is a hand over here to the right. And while the mic is going there, you know, a number of people have talked about her courage. I remember it was about a month ago that she and Gordon were up here on the platform participating in our virtual Sabbath school class. And I had an opportunity to talk to her briefly afterwards. And I had no idea absolutely had no idea that she was hurting as badly as she was because she just never let it show. She just, she was always thoughtful and kind and gracious. And um, I've, I've really been impressed with that, with Delilah, yes. Um, I, my memory, my first memory of Gordon and Delilah was going door to door and they were newer, newer at the church and they, they jumped right in and were going door to door and um, I always remember her smile and uh, we've been over at Athol Church so we haven't seen them as much but um, the last time I came here and I got to see her, she was holding a baby with the biggest smile on her face. And I, I just, I will keep that memory in my heart. Um, and when I heard that um, she was resting in Jesus, I thought of that Isaiah 57, 1 and 2. And that was a huge comfort. And Janet and I were going door to door. And I, it just, I told Janet, it reminds me of the first time I remember Delilah, that she was out working for the Lord, serving the Lord with the biggest smile on her face. And praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. One more? Yes, right here in the front. Just wanted to thank everyone. Um, I'm uh, Delilah's brother-in-law. Uh, I never looked at her as a, as my sister-in-law. Um, I met Delilah for the first time when she was six years old. Um, and I was talking to my wife a minute ago and she pointed something out. She said in all the years that, you know, she was with Delilah, uh, not once did they ever have an argument. Mm. You know, that, that kind of blew me away. Um, and it, it talks to uh, just the character of person that she was. Um, I had a song, I can't sing it, um, but I had a song when my wife and I first got together and I used to visit. She was always smiling. 
And uh, it was a song I made up. It was only like one stanza. I'm not a very good singer. Uh, but it was Delilah, Delilah, she's a happy little girl. And um, just listening to everyone here, um, I'm just touched because that's who she was. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to thank everyone on behalf of the uh, Robles and Torres family for allowing yourselves to be part of her family. And it just shows me that what God puts together is stronger than blood. Mm -hmm. And um, I thank you guys for showing her love for, I know everyone says she ministered to you guys, but the reality is everyone here ministered to her just as much. And for that, I'm thankful. So I, I thank everyone um, on behalf of our family. Um, you know, we're family, you know, with you guys too. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the beautiful portrait that you have painted in your testimonies this evening. And now, Krishna and Cherith have something to share with us, a testimony in song.
The catapult flower has been called a flower from heaven. As you can see from the short clip, it's a very beautiful flower, very elegant, star-shaped, about 12 inches across, so it's quite impressive in its size, and about seven inches wide. The catapult flower is also very fragrant. And if you're ever privileged to smell the fragrance and the aroma from this flower, you will know that you were in the presence of something very beautiful, something very rare. In fact, the catapult flower is in the top 10 rarest flowers. It's also one of the most expensive and worthwhile flowers on this earth. Very few people are fortunate enough to be able to see the beauty or smell the rich aroma of this truly amazing flower. Why? It rarely blooms, and when it does bloom, it does so at night, and it is gone before the morning. As I said, this flower has been called a flower from heaven. As the catapult flower has been called the flower from heaven, so Delilah's life was truly a gift from our Father in heaven. Anyone who's been touched by her life knows that she was truly a blessing to us, elegant and simple in her own special beauty. She had a sweet kindness and strong faith in God that is uncommon in our selfish world, isn't it? Delilah did not just happen to be in our lives. Delilah did not just happen to be in our lives. She came as a masterpiece from the hand of our Creator. The love that we felt, the kindness, the sweetness, were all gifts from the hand of God. Her strong trust in Jesus, even during illness, tell us how faithful our God is. Those who were fortunate enough to know Delilah have experienced a picture of Jesus that has truly inspired us we would like for Delilah to still be with us. We wish we could linger a little longer in her friendship to feel her faith strengthen us just a little longer. And yet Delilah was called to bloom in the midnight of this earth's history. At a time when the world is truly dark and at a day and time when the coming of Jesus is closer than it has ever been before. Amen. Even as the catapult flower blooms in the darkness and withers before the morning, so Delilah's life was given to us for a season. And in that short time, she planted a seed of faith in our hearts, a seed that is meant to grow. Her life, though short, I want to submit to you, was complete. She did what God asked her to do. And she did it beautifully and finished what God asked of her. Delilah is resting, but God is not. Delilah is resting, but God is not. He is beside you in the trenches of temptation. He has his arm around you in these times of sadness and loneliness. 
His ears are open to your concerns, just like Delilah's were. He is ready and willing to give to you all that you need to be faithful till the great reunion day. Gordon, friends, family, the same God who loved you so powerfully through Delilah is very near. And he is the source of that love, and he will continue to pour that love into your life. His love will never fail. My heart is full, and so are my eyes. (laughs) But, brothers and sisters, the morning is coming. We have a promise in Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, and he used Delilah for part of that work, but he who has begun a good work in you and in I and in me, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What God did in Delilah, he is able to do in you. I am sure of this. The same God who worked through Delilah to love, strengthen, and inspire you will never leave you. He will never forsake you. you too can have what Delilah had. Did you know that? It's a gift. And God is willing to give it to you. What has been shared thus far is that God had given her peace when people came into her presence. They sense a love that is divine. It it was a beyond human love. Would you agree? Those that knew her? It's a gift that God wants to give to each one of you. It is beyond human comprehension. It is something that Jesus longs to give you personally. You have the opportunity tonight. I have an opportunity to share with you words of comfort. And yet, as I was reflecting just a few moments ago, that there are some good preachers in this house thus far but God has something special for you today he has a plan for your life whether you have messed it up thus far or not God has something for you Gordon took the opportunity to share with you from his heart and the reason why he shared was because he wants you in heaven And yet, I know as a pastor and as a servant of Jesus Christ, not everyone in a congregation and a group like this has necessarily given their heart to Jesus. So, Gordon, I'm going to make an appeal. Will you give your heart to Jesus tonight? They would like to see you in heaven. You can have the same assurance You can have the same peace. You can have the same love that you have experienced in the life of Gordon and Delilah and beyond. Amen? My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says through his servant David, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. This may seem strange to you, But it is still nevertheless true. 
the servants of God, those that are resting in sleep, awaiting the coming of Jesus, are exceedingly precious to Jesus. He knows Delilah. He knows you. And what's interesting to me is that even though you and I have sinned, because we've all fallen short of the high mark of Jesus Christ, all of us, yet God loves you, and he wants to take you home. Amen? Delilah, in the short time I've known her, believed in the promise of Jesus. She experienced the love of Jesus in her heart for you. Because it wasn't Delilah that you fell in love with. It was Jesus. Amen? Yes, she was special. I understand. I believe. But it's Jesus Christ who is special. It's Jesus that lived in her heart, that you experienced love, acceptance, one who did not judge, but one that brought people into her presence, excuse me, one that he brought through Delilah into his presence. Amen? You can have this tonight. No matter what your life has been, you can have that just by inviting Jesus into your life this evening. It's a simple choice, and it's a simple gift by God. And it's given to each one who asks. Ask, and you shall receive. The peace, the purity is found in Jesus. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ restores and he heals. Just open your heart to him tonight. He will give you stability in a life of chaos, in a world in chaos. Jesus wants to walk with you as a friend, as a savior from sin, to bring your life that it may be chaotic into an, an, a life that is ordered with the love of God and the presence of Jesus. You can have God as your friend. And you can walk with him every single moment of every day. It's a choice. Why? It's not because you are lovable, but it's because God is love. And that's something that Delilah was motivated by. That's why you were attracted to be in her presence. You felt a love that was divine. It was because Delilah loved you because she loved Jesus. And she had experienced the presence of Jesus. And you can have this too. Jesus says, as was mentioned, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You can go with Jesus wherever you are. There's hope in Jesus. Did you know that this was not God's plan? God never intended for Delilah to die. He never intended for each one of us to die. His plan was that everyone would have eternal life. And so because in the Bible it tells us God's record, record of history that Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, sin entered into this world. But God also had a plan to save us. He sent his son to this world to save you and I. God became man so that you would understand that God understands your experience. He experienced pain. He experienced loneliness. He experienced betrayal, hurt. He even experienced death. And that's why Jesus cried out and he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Maybe perhaps you're asking that question. Why Delilah? Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. God will comfort your heart. You see, the enemy no longer has a, a grip because one more is asleep in Jesus. And as Gordon mentioned to me the other day, Let's go get 100 more. Amen. 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 I like that, Gordon. I'll join you, brother. In a day, we may not know what the future holds for us today, 
But we do know who holds the future, Gordon. I want to encourage you to keep your eyes on the great shepherd, the good shepherd. No matter what your trials are, no matter what mistakes you've made, we've all made mistakes. And the Bible tells us, God's inspired word tells us, there's none righteous, not one. But my question to you is, what will you do with the testimony that has been shared tonight? Will you invite Jesus to come in? My Lord and Savior says to you tonight, he says in Matthew chapter 11, he says, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy with burdens, and I will give you rest. The only true rest and peace is found in Jesus Christ. If you are not a believer in Jesus, you can be one tonight. If you are a believer in Jesus, you can have the peace of heaven in this moment. Renew your walk with Jesus. That's really the purpose, to remember how God worked in Delilah's life. It is a testimony of God's saving power. He can transform us. He can give you comfort. He can give you purity. He restores. He heals. There's hope in Jesus Christ. That's what motivated Delilah to be a friend to you. She impacted so many lives. And you can have that at this moment. And so the question remains, do you? Dear friends, the God of Delilah and Gordon invites you to open your heart to him, to keep your focus on the good shepherd who leads his sheep home. And I'd like to read something to you in closing. It's Revelation 21 because John, who was in the presence of Jesus for several years, he came to know Jesus as a friend. And in Revelation 21 and verse 2, God showed John in visions like watching a movie at the theater. He sees something of the future and God shows John exactly what the hope is. And this is what he says. And he says, I, John, saw the holy city, referred to as the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride that is adorned for her husband. And John says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, take notice, the tabernacle or the dwelling place of God is with men, human beings. And he will dwell with them. He will live with us. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You see, he is the great physician, the great healer. He can heal the soul. He can transform your life in such a way that you go from hatred to love. And only God can do that. And there shall be no more Death, praise God. Amen? Amen? Neither shall there be sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne, that's Jesus, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, John, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto them that is thirsty of the fountain of water of life freely. So words of comfort come from Jesus. I pray that God has comforted your heart today for those who mourn and those who ache. He is a loving God. He cares for you and he has a plan for your life. My hope and my prayer is that you will walk with him from this day forward until we meet Jesus again and see Delilah on the resurrection morning. Amen. Amen.
Yes, please come up. Gordon, my friend, because the road ahead will have challenges, yet your Savior, Jesus Christ, will walk with you. So we're going to take a time of a prayer of consecration for Gordon and his walk with Jesus from this day forward. Amen. 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 So we're going to, those that are able, let's kneel and we're going to pray for him. Come close and we'll lay hands on him as well. We are so grateful that you have invited us to come before the throne of grace in a time of our need. We thank you, our Father, for your mercies and your kindnesses and your goodnesses to us. And even though we do not always understand the twists and the turns in the pathway of life, Nevertheless, you have assured us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So, our Father, as we kneel around our brother, Gordon, we are so thankful for his love of Jesus the Savior that he has shared with us, not only in the quiet moments, but in the moments when he's standing in the desk and preaching the word. And so, our Father, we know he senses the terrible loss that he has sustained. And our hearts go out to him. And we pray that the angels will be his constant companions in those times when loneliness and sorrow, and possibly even doubt at times, seizes him. We pray that you will embrace him in your arms of love and bring him comfort and strength and assurance and hope and that you will keep him by your grace. Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless his ministry. Give him voice and power to preach the word. And may many, many be found in the kingdom. As a result, not only of his preaching, but his personal ministry, his kindness, his friendship. And we ask these things in the blessed and wonderful name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father in heaven, I also want to lift my voice on behalf of a friend and a brother. Father, I pray and thank you, Lord, that you have sent your grace and your love and poured it into Gordon's heart. I trust, Lord, that you will send angels to surround him, to push back the forces of evil so his thoughts will not be of doubt or questioning you, but to go forward in faith and believing and seeing the future that you've given us through the prophet John that there will be many more who will come into the kingdom as a result of our faithfulness to you. Amen. So, Father, I pray that you will strengthen him day by day, moment by moment, Amen. that you will speak to his heart clearly in his mind, that he may walk with you day by day and never forsake you. Amen. For we know, Lord, you never forsake him. Amen. And this Amen. is our prayer because we have confidence in the name of Jesus. Amen. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God be with you, brother.
Jesus, the very thought of Thee, with sweetness fills my breast, but sweeter far Thy face to see. And in thy presence rest, abide with me. Fast falls eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide when other helpers fail and comforts flee. Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Where is death's sting? O oh, grave thy victory. I triumph still, if thou abide with me. In life and death, O Lord, abide with me. It's been a sweet experience being in God's presence with you here today. We have refreshments immediately following the close of the service downstairs. And as the pastor of this church, I want you to know that you're always welcome to come to the Hayden Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'd like to close with prayer, and following the prayer, we're going to have an opportunity where you can sing and express gratitude to God. So I'd like to invite you to bow your head with me as I offer a prayer of thanks to God for His goodness. Gracious Father in heaven, who sits on the throne of the universe, Father, we are indebted to you because of your love and your gift of your Son, Jesus. There are hearts that have been comforted, hearts that have had pain, perhaps broken, hurting. So, Father, I pray that you would bless each one with the peace of heaven, the presence of your Holy Spirit and your holy angels, that our thoughts will be lifted toward heaven day by day. I thank you, Father, that you're one who loves one who accepts, and one who heals. So I thank you, Father. I thank you for your great love and the comfort that you provide for all of the family of God. And everyone that is here is a child of Jesus. We thank you for being our creator, and we look forward to the day when you come to take us to our real home in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand? This is a Gordon and Delilah song. Sing with me. When shall I see Jesus? Oh, when shall I see Jesus and reign with him above 
and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. And from the flowing fountain drink everlasting love, and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout glory, for I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Gird on the gospel armor of faith and hope and love, and you'll hear the trumpet sound in that morning. And when the combat's ended, he'll carry you above, and you'll hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout glory, for I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Our ears shall hear with transport the host of heaven sing and shall hear trumpet sound in that morning. Our tongues shall chant the glories of our immortal King, and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout glory, for I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound. May you go in peace and in the love of Jesus Christ. We'll now have ushers will usher you out of the sanctuary and we'll be praying for each one of you. God be with you.